YouTube, what's going on? Boba1951, bringing you another video. Uh, this time we're gonna do something new. Uh, we're gonna call this one the PSA Slab Candidates. Or from here on out, thanks to Elite Co. 3, we're gonna call them Slab Cans. So Slab Cans are basically cards that are gonna pass the muster to be sent off to PSA. All those cards are out here right in front of you. And we've got some slabs that we had come back. This is a Raphael Devers 2018 Tops Heritage and a Gem Mint 10. And we have an Andrew Benintendi over here, 2018 Tops Heritage, also a PSA 10, which I had featured in my one of my latest PSA videos. But these were slab candidates I had figured out in the past. I had pack pulled them, looked at the centering, made sure everything uh, was going to be good on those, and they went off to PSA to be graded. So that's exactly what we're looking for today. It is also the last week of October, which means the World Series is in full swing. So last night was the longest game, game three, in World Series history in terms of innings and time. I think it ran seven hours and 12, 20 minutes, and it ended up being an 18-inning ball game, which unfortunately the, my Red Sox did not come out on top. But in honor of the Red Sox, we've got a 1968 uh, Red Sox American League Champions official yearbook that I had picked up from a garage sale uh, back in the spring. I've been calling the Sox in five for uh, most of the past week. I still think that could be the case. Uh, if it does come back to Boston, I still don't feel like the Dodgers can pull it off and, and win here in the cold weather and all the complaining they've done uh, in terms of the fans and the mound and every other excuse they can come up with. Game four is tonight, so go Sox. I'm a little worried about their uh, pitching that they went through last night, but uh, the Dodgers were on the same uh, short end of the stick when it comes to using all their players and pitchers. So, you know, hopefully it even up, evens out in the end. So it's time to go over some of these slab candidates. Let's just pull them a little closer to me. I can view them as I'm picking them up and putting them in front of the camera. So this first one here, this is a uh, 2014 Mookie Vets. I just got this off of eBay uh, Thursday, I believe. So two days ago. Uh, everything looks good and sharp on this card and it is a rookie these are slowly going up in value and i need more uh, mookie cards in slabs let me take a quick look at the back so for these moderns i'm expecting a 10 on each and every one of them anything less than that a nine i guess can be okay if i get an eight on anything i'm gonna be crying so this one is pack pulled from a tops archives by me this year such a beautiful card it's probably one of my favorite cards out right now in the style i think of the 1960 cards that um i may even have one here to show off later but um these are absolutely gorgeous we've got two of my favorite players andrew benintendi and mookie betts on this and it's probably not high in value i don't know if it's a short print uh, i haven't seen too many online for sale so it could be but uh, definitely going out to PSA. So this one here, this is from YouTuber Mike O. I had grabbed from him from the National. This is a Hank Aaron Topps Living Set. Um, I was worried about the centering at first, but I think it's going to pass the, the test of the 6040. Uh, Mike did a great job of securing this card, and corners are just fine. Um, but slight worry about it coming back in nine just for centering overall this one was also pack pulled from that same tops archives box i picked up at target so walker bueller had a fascinating seven strong innings last night uh he's just going to continually go up in value a young phenom pitcher for the dodgers anything with that rookie card logo on it i'm uh, looking more so to send off to PSA. I don't collect Dodgers. I don't collect Walker Bueller. This will probably end up in a holder and then off to be sold somewhere. But it's a great card right there. Next up, uh, I think this is a 2011 Bowman Chrome, J.D. Martinez. Uh, I wiped this down. I've been watching some videos for other slab can um, cards. So... Basically, when you've got the, the chrome, any kind of uh, surface, you want to A, make sure there are very few, if none, uh, which is what you're looking for, scratches to that actual chrome surface. 
along with wiping down any fingerprints or dirt that might stick to it uh, before you send it off because PSA is not going to do that for you and they're going to ding you for uh, potential surface issues. So I've been wiping down uh, these chrome cards. I've got a few others here for this batch, which I forgot to mention. Um, Dustin Bellinger, another YouTuber, is... Uh, doing uh, another group submission so I've gotten in on the last two or three with him and uh, he reached out to me again and said hey we're ready to go uh, once more so that's what I'm getting these cards uh, together ready for the bottom line is make sure you wipe down your chrome cards kids and this is a beauty uh, I bought I think just one box of uh, heritage high number for 2018 so far and I pulled this Torres. So this is, it's not super low numbered. We're talking at a $9.99, but I've seen some online right now for 40 or 50 bucks. Uh, and that's just raw. So this went from out of my uh, box in my hands into this Card Saver 1, which also for those submitting to PSA, this is the only way you should really go in terms of sending off your cards to uh, be put into the slabs because Basically, what they do, is my understanding, is they will cut around the card. You can see how much space is on the left and the right. Uh, so definitely pick up a, a bunch of these, and this is the only way. I've been submitting them. I don't put penny sleeves on them, and uh, there have been no complaints on their end. So as I mentioned, I have a few Chrome cards. This is uh, Mike Trout. We'll check the year here. I'm not 100% certain. It might have been 2016. Everything looked pretty sharp on this. Uh, I had no surface damage, no scratches that I could see or very minimal. So yeah, obviously hoping for a 10 on this one as well. Let's take a look at the back. This is actually 2017. My apologies. And everything looks sharp here. Also, can't have enough trouts slabbed up by PSA. Another pack pulled from the spring. This is, uh, I think it's Reese Hoskins. Uh, my apologies if I'm not saying that right. I haven't yet to hear an announcer say his name, but it, it looks like I would say Reese or Rice. Uh, but yeah, another rookie card, Bowman Chrome Her um, Bowman Chrome, Topps Heritage uh, for 2018. This is not a high number, but another definite slap candidate. All right, so we're going to move on to some football now. So the hottest player in the league this year, if you're paying any attention to the NFL, is this Rookie of the Year contender. And if he doesn't get hurt, he's almost a lock for Rookie of the Year, Patrick Mahomes. So the funny thing about this card is I grabbed it off of Com C over the summer because it wasn't selling. There was a lot of uh, copies online. It might have been around a buck or buck fifty. I can't remember. I tried to flip it for. Uh, I usually try to stay in the range of like twenty-five to forty percent uh, flip profit on lower end cards so that's what i did i put it up and it sat there for months and months it was costing me a penny a month to hold so i figured what the heck i will take it offline and bring it home and turns out that he's a super stud probably gonna be rookie of the year and this is gonna go now go off to psa another chrome card this one i think the next few are gonna be tom brady's Got a beautiful shimmer there. You're not seeing very few, you're seeing very few scratches. Some of the scratches there could even be on the card saver itself. This may have been pulled off of Com C as well, but I need more chromes um, from Brady in slabs. I'm still slowly but surely building as many of his base cards in my set as I can from PSA. Also, so this is a 2009 Topps Chrome when they were still in the football game. This is a Tom Brady uh, base score, 2004. I'm trying to get a lot of uh, cards sent off from the 2002 through the 2004 years as well. This one was in perfect condition. Uh, it's a league leader card. It is not just his standard base. But again, hoping for a 10. Come back here. And we'll be checking in, obviously. I will be putting up a video probably in early winter when those eventually come back. We're running maybe four months right now for PSA orders. Another Tom Brady here. Tops total. 
award winner. Uh, wiped down as well. This one did have a huge fingerprint on it that I caught. Uh, you know, I, you put them in the cases like this up here at the top, and you're like, oh no, I left a big fingerprint right over the Brady. So uh, that has now been wiped off, and um, I think even in the future, especially when the values of the cards go up that I'm putting in here, if they're $50 cards or up, I'm going to put on some from gloves and to put these in the cases, especially the chrome cards. This is a, it's hard to see down there, I think it's a 2006. You can see that on camera. Beautiful card here. Really hoping for a 10 on that one. This is a 2005 Fleer Ultra from Brady. I love that action shot. Got his line all around him, protecting him as he's probably about to go to, to the ground. So I have maybe 350 to 400 base cards of Brady I've been building up. And I meticulously go through them. I am not sending them all off to get graded, obviously. I mean, that was just a random one I saw. I might have had three copies, and that one for sure was the best. This one may look familiar to you if you uh, do watch my videos. It was pulled, well not pulled, it was pulled from my card, local card show last week. And it's numbered to 150, 2018 Panini here. Uh, all serial numbered cards, if they're in great shape, we're going to end off in PSA slabs. So we're setting that one off as well. I think this is it for modern. And this is uh, not a high value card, but if you're in my household, Julian Edelman is a stud. My wife absolutely loves the guy, and I'm going to get his 2010 score rookie graded. I bought a big lot of Patriots, and I uh, ended up with a couple copies of this one, and this was by far the best. So once again, hoping for a 10 on that one. I actually have a pile of slab cans here to the side, mainly we were vintage, which we're gonna quickly go over. I'm not gonna go into in depth on those as much, but I've got this Brady Immaculate out of 99 that I'm still unsure of whether or not I'm gonna send. So if you take a look, corners up the top are gray. This is a super thick card, as you can see here. It's probably equal to five or six regular cards. But that's the problem, is these Immaculate thick cards, we're gonna take a look here at the bottom left hand corner is just a tad bit soft so i don't think it's coming back a 10 why should i send this off if it's not going to at least be considered as a 10 um it's still up in the air maybe i might end up sending it in at the very end but for now it's on the bubble and we've still got some uh vintage cards to show off so i haven't 100 percent decided on any of these yet and i'll show you some issues with them all but what I'm doing is basically figuring out, let's say it comes back a PSA 6. Will that increase the value significantly on a card from the 50s or 60s? Is it more rare? Did it have a gray back that was more rare? Uh, is it a star player? Something to that effect. So these first two are Carl Yastrzemski. Now this one isn't as old as some of the others I'm going to be showing you. But the centering on the front is beautiful. Corners are beautiful. Everything about it is going well here. It's the centering on the back that I've got an issue with. So I don't think it's going to come back any better than a PSA 8 because of the back here. So it's still on the bubble. I'm probably going to send it because I love Yaz for my PC. And if I can get a 7 out of it, I think I would be happy with that. So that's what we're shooting for. So this Yaz, um, the issue is right there at the top. We've got pen marks. You can see them here and here. So centering was decent enough. Um, I don't have this year slab. This is the best copy that I own out of about four. And even the back, whoop, that was a price I had put on it uh, when I was selling. So this is a 1969, uh, again, on the bubble for that pen i don't know how much i would be deducted for that but i'm probably not looking at any better than like a psa 6 for this card all right so the rest here are some commons we're going to quickly go through them um still all in the bubble i'm going to ultimately decide on probably four or five of these we've got this uh 
59, I believe. Bob Smith. Beautiful centering. That one's pretty close to going. I like the corners on there too. Same with this Tom Sturdivant. Gorgeous centering. Almost looks pack pulled to me. But I think what's pulling me back on this one that I had noticed a little mark over here. I'm going to see if I can still potentially wipe that off. And how I'm got to do some research as to how much value it'll add. 1960 Earl Wilson. Nelson Chittum, also 1960. So you can see the centering on these is all pretty great. It's Frank Bauman. Corners are not soft. No creases. I'm going to go over those again. We got a 58 here. We're working backwards a little bit. It's Phil Renna. I want a lot of vintage. Uh, well, Patriots as well, but Red Sox cards, slabbed. Um, I'm not looking to necessarily sell all these. If something came back a PSA 9 and it went up to $200 in value, I'm going to get rid of it for what I paid for these. But uh, still, uh, I, I definitely want to add some of these to my own collection. So you got this Billy Consolo. And lastly, 59 Frank Malzoni. So yeah, this is to basically just show off what my process is like when I'm looking for slab cans to send off, uh, both on the vintage side as well as the modern. I don't think, especially when you pack pull it, you're looking for centering and putting it right into that card saver one for the modern. Uh, if you're picking up stuff at a show, just make sure it hasn't been manhandled and most of those that I have here were not. So vintage, you're gonna look for Centering, obviously, soft corners, marks. Did somebody write on the year or a uh, player was traded? I've had that happen in the past where I didn't notice it at first and it was in light pencil on the back. It just drives me bananas. But anyway, hope that was uh, slightly educational for you all, especially if you've never done your own PSA order. Get those card saver ones and uh, send out uh, a group submission with somebody that you know and trust. You can do it usually for $10 to $11 per card, and that might include most of the shipping uh, each way along with insurance. So it's definitely beneficial to get a 100 plus card order at once versus you're gonna send in one yourself, you're gonna pay over $30 for that card. Um, up to 10, I think it's 20 per card. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Go Red Sox, we expect to have a video coming out next week to show off some new Red Sox cards I've got coming in along with celebrating the World Series champion 2018 Boston Red Sox. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.